In the previous video I tested the CNC machine with the new acetal plates by milling some aluminium and also tramming the spindle so it could move square to the wasteboard. The process of tramming got me thinking about how I could design some kind of mechanism to find adjust the orientation of the spindle along the X and Y axis to make the process a lot easier. So in this video I present some of the iterations of the design. So this section would go on the gantry and these four holes here will be tapped and this is the center, center point. Then the Z axis C beam will be bolted onto this section here and the holes here are countersunk so the machine screws sit flat because these two sections fit together like this. And then these elongated holes line up with the holes that are tapped on the rear. So I'll just tap the, the holes in the MDF. So that has the pivot. And what I'll do is check this with the, with the spindle when it's all put together. And when I'm happy that it's lined up properly, I'll tighten that up. Just on MDF, I'm really struggling to to twist that back. So I think these four machine screws, if this was made out of aluminium, with a center pivot point, will be strong enough to lock into place after tramming the spindle. Tramming is obviously the hardest part of kind of setting up the CNC machine because it means you have to dismantle certain parts and constantly adjust as you're kind of testing how accurate your cut is. I'm now going to show you the second iteration in which I've designed a fine adjustment mechanism into the plates. Um, I put the machine screws around the back just so you can see the movement of the elongated holes here. And what I've also done, if I pull this apart, machine these uh, ears, these unusual shape, that fit into the openings, uh, these little windows there. They're actually back to front. Um, it's meant to sit this way around on the machine, but for some reason when I exported the files, I flipped one by accident. So actually the way this sits with the machine screws up here, the eccentric spacers go at the top um, and essentially the fixed wheels stay at the bottom. So when the spindle pushes down, the fix will stay in position. There isn't any likelihood that the eccentric spacers might twist and shift. And it's basically two degrees either way, so four degrees in total. You can see that there, and that's just designed in Fusion 360. I've written a note there to remind me to flip or rotate, check what the hell I did with the with the vector files, uh, I definitely made a mistake. I'm not sure if this shape here can be improved or whether I should place the grub screw or the machine screw that will eventually act as a sort of fine adjustment uh, in a different position. Uh, so ignoring the top and bottom holes which have been reversed, um, what I might do is come off at a uh, angle, about 90 degree angle, as best I can from the surface of this curve here um, and change the shape so I have a flat edge and this has a better contact at the moment because I've drilled straight in 90 degrees from the edge of this um, the machine screw sinks into the corner, onto the corner of the thread uh, as opposed to the flat edge at the, f at the front that increases the amount of material that I can put a tap on the aluminium but also gives me a flat edge where I can actually put a, a wing knob or a nut which can lock this in place and essentially when I go to tram the machine I just loosen one, tighten the other and it will go one way and if I go the opposite way and then vice versa I think that's going to work but I'm going to think about it a little bit longer before I actually cut anything out. You know, it's one of these things where you you go to do it and then you realize that you've overlooked something when you when you go to actually use the uh, mechanism. But this is this should be like a one-time mechanism. You know, that initial time of tramming the machine, I shouldn't have to redo this. 
So anyway, that's the uh, prototype, uh, it's version 2. I'm cutting a segment of the pivot plate to test the concept in some scrap 8mm aluminium. I've actually ordered some 6082T6 because I'm feeling confident this will work, but the scrap I'm using is of an unknown grade. I was struggling to drill holes with the drilling tool path and pecking set at 0.2mm using a normal single flute carbide bit. I stubbornly kept on going and later changed over to Europa 5mm single flute carbide bit to air clear the pivot window and elongated holes when... Okay, something happened there. Um, while I was cutting, I the machine just completely stopped and the bit was sort of held right in that point there. The spindle stopped as well and uh, it seemed to coincide with when I turned off that bloody heater. Um, this isn't as well shielded as I thought it was, which is a bit worrying, but on a positive note, everything's cutting really accurately. That's meant to be 20. Uh, the only thing I still have a problem with is um, doing the uh, just holes. It's almost as if the bit works better when it's moving. If it just plunges, it doesn't seem to um, cut so well. Um, what I'm thinking is maybe using a centering drilling bit, sort of that you get with uh, laves, metal laves, and stuff like that, and just pointing out all these areas and um, drilling them out on a drill press instead. So I only use the use the CNC machine to do the unusual shapes on the outside. I kind of roughly know where my home position is so I'm going to see if I can try and cut the two test sections out. This is a waste. Um, you know, it should still line up and then I'll work out what I've got left on the off cut and see if I can cut another pivot block uh, out. That's really annoying it was actually doing really well. Because of the interruption in the cutting, the outside of the two segments are not aligned with the holes within. What I forgot to do when turning the machine on was homing it first and then setting the new origin before cutting. Had I done this, I would have been able to realign my cuts. But this shouldn't matter as I will still be able to reassemble everything together, minus the pivot center and the wing of aluminium which I was planning to tap for the fine adjustment screw. The protrusion of aluminium which will be tapped for the fine adjustment screw is also off by about 1 to 1.5 millimeters from where it should have been in relation to the pivoting window. It's a little higher and a little further away. Okay, I'm having a bit of trouble drilling into the aluminium now. I don't know what... Well, I know what I did here is I accidentally clicked the tool path for plastics instead of metal. But then when I changed it over it still wasn't cutting okay. Anyway, I think what I'm going to do is swap over to this centering bit and then swap over back to the 5mm uh, Europa bit um, just to cut the outside because that is a much nicer bit to work with. So I decided I needed to get the right tools for drilling the holes on the CNC plates, ones which I could either use on the CNC machine itself or on a pillar drill after marking out. These would have to be shorter and more rigid stub style drill bits. The point angle on these types of bits can vary, and I've read that you should mark up with a centre or spotting drill with a larger angle than the drill bits you're planning to use if you want to get an accurate hole. I had a choice between slightly cheaper HSS cobalt bits and more expensive carbide ones. Either type had different point angles. If I buy the cobalt ones, their point angle would be 135 degrees, and this would mean I would need an equivalent or larger spotting bit to mark up. 140 degree spotting bits are very hard to find on eBay here in the UK, and the ones on engineering supply websites are very expensive. Alternatively, if I bought the carbide bits, their point angle was 118 degrees, and I could use centering or spotting bits with a 120 degree point angle, which are much easier to find, but the carbide bits are a hell of a lot more expensive. I think I can get away with using a large cobalt drill bit as a spotting drill. But for now I will use a normal centering drill bit. These drill bits have two angles. The smaller angle is set at 120 while the larger one is set at 60 or 90. So providing I don't go too deep, this should be fine. So I'm going to have to drill through these. It hasn't gone through. I'm going to drill this section here out, this uh, shallow recess 
it's meant to go around this way uh, for the um, <clears throat> It almost feels like my vectors for this plate are coming out backwards. I also made a recess for the machine screw which would eventually hold the C-beam for the Z-axis and now that's on the wrong side. So what I thought was the left section of the pivot plate is now going to be the right side. When designing the plates I used the mirroring tool in Fusion 360 which should mean that the plates can flip around and still marry up together. I fired down the bridges from the aluminium segments and tapped and assembled everything. When I go to do the actual plates, I will use the drill press to tap and try and minimize the cocking it up. I also marked and drilled a hole which I again tapped for the fine adjustment screw. This is a little off from the CAD model because of the cock up with the cutting but I can still use it to test the mechanism. I can also adjust the model based on how this works by taking measurements using my vernier caliper. Okay this is the final section the test. I've uh, put the machine screws from the rear just so you can actually see the mechanism a little bit better. Um, there obviously was a few mistakes um, because of the uh, recess that I cut out here being on the top of the plate so essentially it meant that I was actually cutting the opposite side of this uh, pivot plate but as you can see the pivot block fits in the pivot window really well that's really really satisfying when this section has been pushed up and essentially the spindle is moved uh, counterclockwise, if I need to adjust it, I can simply just unscrew this and you can see it dropping. And obviously when I'm happy with the position, I can then lock it down with that locking nut there. Mm -hmm. 